So you definitely use emotions in all of your thinking. Um, and you guys are confused because you make this separation between certain kinds of your feelings and emotions that's in error. So people think, oh, you're talking about believing any feeling. No, you don't trust your feelings. One of the reasons you have to admit this is because you, you have to learn how to get information uh, out of a stream that's entirely filled with emotive, you know, structures and functions. So, for example, um, when you, th you know, when you believe something to be the case, that's because you have a feeling of comprehension of it. You feel like you comprehend something, and that's, that's a feeling. In terms of having confidence in logic, that's because after centuries of um, analyzing our own inferences, because we have an inference machine, all mammals, I think all creatures, but definitely all humans and mammals have um, you know, their brains are inference machines. And as we look at how that works, because people are making these complicated inferences like, you know, I think it's going to rain tomorrow or whatever. And we're like, well, break that down. How can you know that? Because a lot of these inferences turn out to not be correct. And you break down the good inferences and you get down to the syllogistic level. There's other ways to put it, but a syllogism with this, the three-step argument, you know, principle one, principle two, and then the inference three. And that is immediately comprehensible. A classic example of a syllogism always used is uh, Socrates is a man, men are mortal, therefore Socrates is mortal. That's immediately comprehensible. We feel like we could understand that, that that's solid. And our trust in logic is that, well, if we put a bunch of these together, related syllogisms together, and each one of those is good, then I'm confident also in the result. And that's a feeling. And people that have, you know, brain damage or certain kinds of brain illnesses, and schizophrenia, their understanding, the comprehensibility of a simple syllogism will fail. And then all of their reasoning is failing. Right? It has to be this way because of all the times people think they comprehend things and they're wrong. Or just as a practical matter and probably more into why I know this to be the case is you know in programming I'm always having to learn new systems and whatnot and if I'm not learning them for a job because it's already needed in the job then you know I'm doing it as professional development trying to keep up learning the latest tools this current job I'm working on the last whatever it's been six five months whatever it is um, you know I had to learn like four or five brand new systems and the way that happens is I have to generate curiosity for those systems. And they may or may not be something that naturally appeals to me, like, oh, I just automatically want to learn more about it. No, I've got to dive in, generate confusion so that I'm confused. And then that confusion sparks my curiosity, which keeps me going so that I can learn the system. It's all through managing the analytic emotions, the feeling of comprehension, the feeling of... Um, uh, curiosity, right? The being able to ha emotionally handle states of confusion and even embrace them because they're a necessary step to rise curiosity. These are emotional things. Now, there's people that have no handle on, you know, other emotions in their lives that become geniuses in, in analysis. And, you know, you can use these analytic emotions to escape, just like people can use the war and glory emotions to escape from their non-glorious uh, life. And so that can be done, but you have to balance your intellectual emotions well. And frankly, I think that if you don't realize that your intellect is using emotions to drive itself on this path of hopefully knowledge, or you could say for sure knowledge, but good and bad, erroneous and apt knowledge, that you're very likely to be influenced uh, in your analysis by these emotions and these ulterior and these truer or deeper motives. And 
people think, no, that can't be. My, my knowledge has to be from objective reality only, can't be filtered through my brain. Um, well, hopefully it can. Hopefully for you it can be filtered through your brain. You're going to have to realize that you're working with the brain. But look at all of us talking about, you know, non-monetized channels, right? So that's not the ulterior motive. And we're talking about, you know, determinism, will, uh, to be or not to be, um, all of these, you know, subjects that basically are meant to be as purely analytical as possible. And look at all the emotion. Look at all the hurt feelings. Now, my, my view on this has evolved a little, but, um, you know, I've always thought, oh, you need to get a, a thick skin if you're going to do this particular hobby. And that's one of the good things, because when you start doing it, you have all these emotions, and you think people are attacking you in the real world because they're making an argument against you, and, you, and, the, and the, you know, like when I went to Heitler, they went, hello, hello, because he wasn't paying attention like often. And, you know, how, what's the emotive impact on you, and then trying to deal with it, realizing why am I so upset right now about this argument that's been going on over, you know, the internet. I'm interested in it, I enjoy having that argument, then why am I having these difficult or even bad emotions about it? This is something you can learn by doing this hobby, how to control your intellectual emotions and especially how to separate the analytic emotions so they don't immediately cause non-analytic emotions. So for example, if in an analytic process, somebody tells you they see an error, and whether that error is total bullshit, or whether there might be some truth to it, or it's because of their misapprehension, all the infinite possibilities really of what's really going on there, you are not interpreting it analytically, you are getting hot and bothered like your very soul has been insulted, like somebody's trying to destroy you, and so on and so forth, right? So handling that has to do with being able to separate your emotions so that the one doesn't automatically lead into the other. In other words, ideally you would have a balanced set of analytic emotions that don't fling you like a slingshot into your fears about your self-worth and all that stuff. And if you don't realize that it is an emotional process, I don't see how you can make the separation. You're not admitting that there is a connection in the first place. And, you know, and that's why you get so emotional about things you don't know yet.